Hey everybody, today we're going to talk about multiplying decimals and these decimals can be positive or negative. So that's what we're going to talk about. All right, as you can see, I've got my colors. Here we go, let's dive in. So the biggest question I get asked is, do I have to line up the decimals? And the answer is no, you do not have to line up the decimals. You can, it just means more work. So it's up to you, but I don't recommend it. All right, so we're gonna do an example. Negative 3.5 times 0.17. Now notice that this negative 3.5 is a rational number. It's negative, and then this one's 0 0.75, 0 0.17, sorry. All right. So the first thing, we don't have to line them up. So when I write it, I'm gonna rewrite it vertically. So I've got negative 3.5 times 0.17. And notice that my decimals do not line up and that's okay. All right, so after I rewrite it, I'm gonna multiply this like it says 35 times 17. So step two, I want to multiply like normal. So seven times five, 35. Seven times three, plus three, 24. Then on my second row, what do I have to put underneath a five? I have to put that placeholder zero. And now I do one times five, one times three, and I'm done. Well, I'm not done, but I'm done with this part. Then I add them together. So five plus zero, four plus five, three plus two, and I end up with five, nine, five. Now this is where we have to stop. Logically, three times one is three. So if three times something really tiny, it cannot be 595. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to figure out where to put my decimal. So step three, place, decimal and the way I put my decimal here is I count how many numbers are behind the decimal in the problem and I put that many numbers behind the decimal in the answer so here I have one decimal place and here I have one two decimal places so one plus two is three so I have to start here and I'm gonna go one, two, three decimal places. So my answer is, well, it's not my answer yet, 0.595. And then the absolute last thing that we do, we have to place a negative or, we have to figure out if the, if the answer is negative or positive. Negative or positive. Here's the trick I always use. Two times two is positive four. So then what's the opposite of two times two? It would be the opposite of four. And then for this, it would be, okay, so then what's the opposite of the opposite of two times two. So you end up with a positive four. So every time you change that sign, the answer has to change with it. So here I had a negative times a positive. 
So my answer is going to be negative 0.595. Another trick you may have seen is the tic-tac-toe, where you have positive, 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 and then the rest are negatives. And what this means is a negative times a negative is a positive. A negative times a positive is a negative. And a positive times a negative is a negative. When I was in seventh grade, I always remembered if I had one negative sign, it stays negative when I'm multiplying and dividing. If I have two negative signs and I'm multiplying, those two negative signs come together to make a positive sign. And then it keeps going. So one negative sign stays negative if you're multiplying or dividing. And if you have two negative signs, they come together to make a positive when you're multiplying or dividing. All right, let's do one example where you take over. Let's see if you can figure out what negative 3.5 times 7 is. Negative 3.5 times 7. You should get negative 2.45. Negative 2.45. All right, one more. Let's see. Let's do 1.75 times 4.2. Oh, let's make that negative 1.75 negative 1.75 times 4.2 you should end up with negative 7.35 all right one more lesson down thanks for hanging in there don't forget to like and subscribe ring the bell notifications you all know the drill I will see you next time when we multiply fractions. Bye guys.